You know what guys i absolutely love this next song just the idea that there's this god and he doesn't just um see me in a crowd mm. and just think oh i've seen that face but he knows my name yeah do you know how many times you've meet people and they're like oh what's your name again and they're not 
ruling the universe and here's this God yeah. and he knows my name. Love it. Your 
After such a powerful praise and worship session, we are now going to get into the word. And we're going to get into 1 Kings 19. But before we do that, I just want to introduce um, everyone here that's sitting on a panel. My name is Malima Ninval. Next to me is Isaac Fletcher. And then on the far side is Scully Belgrave. And maybe to introduce ourselves, I can say that we are a group of people that love to study the Bible. Uh, we love a good discussion of the Bible. And so we're about to have a very interesting and open discussion about 1 Kings 19. And so let's just get straight into it. Isaac? Thank you, Milimo. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. So, Heavenly Father, I just ask that you be with us, Lord, as we discuss the word, as we get into this discussion about Elijah. And we just ask that everyone that is participating in this discussion comes with an open mind where we can just truly deliver each other with some educating words from what the Bible teaches us. Amen. 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 Okay. So, ladies, I've got a question. Um, firstly, we're doing Elijah, and Elijah was a prophet, a prophet, one of God's highest prophets, it's argued. He's one of God's highest prophets, and there was a point in his life where King Ahab ran to Jezebel and told her about everything that Elijah done. Elijah, then it's fair to say, got afraid and he ran away. Yep. Essentially, this major prophet of God ran away. Yep. So, this is found in 1 Kings 19. My question to both of you is, why did you choose to study Elijah? It's a very good question, and I think you kind of answered it 
um, Isaac when you said that he's this great prophet that we all talk about in the New Testament, but yet he's this guy who runs away from some woman when she threatens his life, when he spent his whole life, um, you know, serving God and not being afraid. I mean, in the previous chapter, he just killed a load of prophets after mocking them all day long, and now he's afraid. And I love the fact that, like him, we have these mountaintop experiences and then we have these low points and I'm so glad that in the Bible it ref it shows both and that's for me I don't know what you think guys but for me the the realness of it the fact that you can be this person who is doing their best you can still have days when you feel like hiding and running and I think it's important to see that on the journey to encourage other people how about you Millie yeah I agree I actually think um, Elijah is a great talking point simply because of how he's referenced in the New Testament. You know, there's a lot of reference to Elijah. So in terms of prophets, it's like he was the prophet of the prophets. Yeah. And so it's the irony of the story. For me, it's the, it's the details in it um, of how God speaks to us um, and in the way that he speaks to us. And there's just so many parts of the story that I really connect to. So, you know, especially, you know, when God is chasing after um, uh, Elijah, and, you know, he shows him all these different, you know, in the wind and in the earthquake. But then in that really still, small voice, that is where God recognizes, sorry, Elijah recognizes who God is. Yep. Um, and for me, that is very, very powerful in terms of me being able to understand when it is that God is talking to me. And sometimes, if it's just too noisy around, you really can't be able to distinguish God's voice, but also the point of when God really is speaking to you, you are able to clarify that this is God, like this is God's voice. Yep. So I think, um, you know, we, as you said, we all have this kind of runaway moment where we're like, God, I'm done, I'm out. But there is also, you know, um, this, this kind of God that is looking and chasing for us and, you know, we sometimes say, oh, I don't recognize God. Or I, I don't think God speaks to me. But when you hear it, you know it. Yep. Yeah. And you know what it is, right? So when you mentioned Elijah to me, I was just like, okay, cool. Interesting character. Reason being is because when I read the story, Elijah is a great prophet. He's a great prophet. He is. Powerful. And yeah. And, and for me personally, I think... Wow, when I think of the pastors of today, the great preachers of today, Elijah, you know, he, he performed miracles. And even he, who was close to God, was human enough to be fearful and flee. Yep. He ran. Mm, yep. And then I put myself in that situation and I say, right. The reason why it, um, it really resonates with me is because... There are times when I feel I'm so in my faith, mm. where I feel I'm so close to God, mm. and then one thing happens, or sometimes actually nothing happens, <laughs> and I run. Yeah. The reality is I run. Yeah. Like, if I'm going to be honest with you, I just run, and then it's, it's beautiful what you said about the still voice. What's really, really interesting is God didn't send someone to speak to Elijah. Mm. Yep. That's true. God yeah. spoke to Elijah. Yeah, yeah. that's true. He valued him enough. Hundred percent. So yeah. If Elijah was my child, <laughs> I would have left him to run. I would have left him to have his little tantrum. And when he finished, I would expect him to come back to me. Mm. And and I do that with my kids sometimes, you know. So not that they have tantrums, and I'm not speaking about my children. <laughs> of speaking about not. children in general. Of course. Sometimes I've heard that when um children or young people are having a bad day and they throw a strop and parents some parents chase after but I personally I'm not designed like that mm. and I let them just do what they're doing and the idea of having this God right who who just the day before worked miracles through him right and knows that he should know better mm. right and sees him not doing better but still loves him enough to, like you say, not just um, not just wait for him to come back, mm. but to actually chase after him. But before he chases after him, feed him, make sure he gets some sleep, realize that his tiredness is part of the problem. Mm. It takes all of that, all his physical needs into account, and then 
comes down looking for him. My children know that I would not be looking for them. Do you know what's really important in what you just now said? You just now highlighted that God fed Elijah. God fed Elijah. Yep, yep, physically. So before God's own needs, he, he put his, Elijah's he put needs, his needs first. first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you know how special that is? That is. God didn't even say, you've run away from me. Yeah. You've run away from me who you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God said, do you know what, Elijah? I know what you need. Yeah, mm. and he focused on that. I know that. what you need. You're my focus. Mm. Yeah. I'm going to serve your needs yeah. before you serve mine. Right. In, in reality, right, we know that many of us, many people, it's the other way around. Yeah, mm. absolutely. It's the yeah. other way around. It's a case of, no, do for me before I do for you. Right. But our saviour appreciated Elijah that much, yeah. loved him that much, right. valued him yep. that much to say, eat, rest, sleep. Yeah. Sure. And I wonder whether we really value this character of God, like this God that chases, right? Because I think you gave a very real example of, I don't know if I'll be chasing after my kids. You know what? When you figured it out and you're ready to repent, yeah. you can come, come back. back. Say sorry to me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Admit what you did. Yes. And then I'll spend an hour telling exactly. you what you just told me about what you did. Right. Yeah. But, but this, is, this is what we see here is a very different God. Yeah. It's a God that recognizes that this is my servant. Okay, you haven't completed your mission. You haven't acted or behaved how I expected you to behave. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I'm still going to chase after you. And I wonder whether, whether this is the God that we understood from when we were a child as to the God that we are experiencing now. Because I certainly feel like God does chase after me. The times when I'm hiding, I'm like, you know what, let me just lay low. Not that you can, yeah. lay low from God. Not at all. Not yeah. at all, right? Not at all. But, you know, and I'm wondering if actually Elijah was exposed to a different experience with God, as you said, met his physical needs verse mm. before he then said, right, let's talk. What, what happened? Like, what's up? What's going on? Yeah, that's a really important point, actually, because... And I'm, I'm really curious about what the people at home think of this. But mm. um, I know when, you know when we've been having conversations about this, one of the things that we talked about was the fact that we see God according to how we were raised, right? I 100%. think Isaac and I were, having, were saying that um, the way that we were raised, is, it has influenced us to see God one way. And I know, Millie, you had a different view of God because of the way that you were raised. Yeah. And um, I'm curious about, for the, for the listeners, like how have you experienced God growing up and what has that done for you in terms of how you see God now? Hmm. And that's an important question in the context of Elijah, right? Because he grew up in a time where Israel had been like a, initially a, 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 a theocracy before they became a kingdom, right? Hmm. And so God had been their leader. Hmm. And they had this picture of God from when Moses was on the mountain. Yeah. And they saw God as this big, scary, yep. awesome thing, um, being. And remember, they, you know, they had these stories coming from Moses about how he parted the Red Sea and also stuff like how um, when, when, they, when Moses was, was on the mountain talking to God, uh-huh. they were so scared that, that w- if they went near it, they would die. Yep. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And, yep. and when Moses, when, when God came to speak to them, and they, they say, God, they would say, Moses, don't let us speak to him. You speak to him for us. And that's the culture in which Elijah had grown. Right. So, I mean, I don't know Elijah, but I doubt that he knew God. Like, he, I don't think he was like... Um, What's that song that Israel Horton sings? I am a friend of God. I am a friend yeah. of God. I yeah. doubt that that's the yeah. kind of God that he knew. Do you know what I mean? Of course not. Yeah, no, no, no. I hear you. And to be honest, the same God that they feared back then, yeah. that's the God I grew up knowing. Right. The God that I was told about yeah. is different from the God that I was taught about. Right, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The reality is, and this isn't me, you know, pointing fingers at the church because it's everything. It's from, it started, ministry started from home. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So it started in my house. Then from my house, it was in church. And the examples that I saw wasn't always love. Mm. Wasn't always the way that we say God is, mm. you know? So it was that tyrannical God, that, that God that we fear, but not fear in, t- in the sense of love, mm. but fear in the sense of, oh my goodness, yeah. if I breathe wrong, I'm going to die. He's going to stop mm. loving me. Like, literally, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? So mm. for me, that's the, that's the God that I was told about. 
in terms of God's loving, God's loving, God's loving. But right. then the God that I was taught about was the very opposite. However, mm-hmm. I like Elijah. I mean, I've had experiences in my personal life where, like I said, I've ran, for sure. But God didn't leave me. Right. God kept asking me in different ways through different people to come back. Mm. And I'm grateful for that because I'm glad that the God that I was told about is the God that I know, mm. for sure. But you see what happened there, Isaac. You couldn't know him secondhand, right? Mm. Like Elijah experienced God for himself. So he knew the God that he was named after, yep. you know, the God, the Jehovah, this great God whose name was unspeakable, yep. right? The God who used him to, you know, defeat the prophets of Baal, the, the God yep. who sent him to tell um, Jezebel and Ahab about themselves. He yep. knew that God, yep. right? But this God, that, like you, you, you're saying that you know, um, you 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 got to know the God that you that you that you were taught. Sorry, the God that you've been told about, the, yes. the loving God, yes. not the loving God, no. right? Right. But that required a personal 100%. encounter. So I'm just wondering, guys, like in terms of um, the guys at home, like what 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 does that person? How do you get to that? personal God because we can talk about question. it theoretically yeah. yes you know I've got to know God for myself but someone could be sitting there thinking well psh, how do you do that I've grown up in church good my whole question. life how do you do that yeah. it's a really good question so <laughs> I don't particularly like the fire the fire experiences but I have to say that I've had some fiery experiences in my life where the God that I was taught about became the God that I experienced, right? Mm. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, even with those at home, everyone has been in a situation where you have no one else to call but God. And you're not even sure yourself if God is going to respond, if he's going to answer, if he's going to come through for you. But you are so, like, where there's nowhere else to go, Mm. that's when, it's like when you kind of hit that rock bottom. Mm. That's when you start building those blocks with God and then that's when you start to have the experiences and you know especially through an experience like that it becomes so strong the bond becomes so strong that it's just not possible to let go of God so easily the next time right because of that type of experience that valley experience you've had with him so that's what I would say so you know if I take from my personal example certainly when I was young and I had my daughter you know that was that was it for me you know disappointment you know, for myself, you know, disappointment for my situation. And I was like, God, like, what, what, where do I go next? And that for me, I would say, was really the point where I was like, you know what? I'm in it with him. Yeah. That is it, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and I hear you. I hear you. I would say I, I'm a stubborn guy. Yeah. Oh, um, would you have known that? I, I'm a, <laughs> no, seriously, Never. Millie, would that have would that have crossed your Not mind? At no, Not at all. Me, me neither. I'm shocked. <laughs> these ladies, these ladies have jokes. I'm shocked. Right. So I'm a stubborn guy, right? And the reality is, I know you said you didn't like the fire. Mm. Growing up, I was very mischievous. Like, I don't know what it was, because I mean, no one likes being told off, especially as a young child. Yeah. But for some reason, I just didn't learn. <laughs> I did not learn, and I, and I told you, and my parents, I mean, they didn't spare no rod, trust me, like, <laughs> I, got, I got the licks, I didn't learn, and I'm grateful for it, I'm so grateful for it. Um, it's a hard question to answer, because I think it's an individual case-by-case situation. Yes. Yeah. One thing that I can definitely say about myself is this, that God planted something mm. in me, that no matter what, no matter how many times I continued to sin, and let's not be fooled, I loved the sin. I enjoyed the sweetness. You like fire. I, I loved fire. <laughs> I did, I did. I, I legitimately enjoyed it. I enjoyed the sweetness of it. And that's not me saying people go out there and burn. I'm saying the total opposite. I'm so grateful that God did not take me yeah. early whilst yeah. I was in that place yeah. Yeah. and there's times when I feel you know tempted or I fluctuate but God always reminds me because of what he planted here yeah. who he is and he brings me back home that's yeah. beautiful man that's beautiful do you know there is so much in this one chapter yeah that absolutely. we could cover but you know we we don't have enough time to cover it all today but I mean I mean I would encourage everybody to um to dip into First Kings 19 at some mm. point. I mean, Millie, I mean, I know we've got to wrap up, but there were some themes that were coming 
out yeah. um, of that chapter around the COVID situation as well. Do you just sure. want to speak to those as we as we wrap up? Yeah, of course, because, you know, we've been discussing that we're, maybe for the recording to state, you know, we're in lockdown right now yeah. in mm. the UK. Uh, it's still tier four. Um, we're not meant to be out, but we're, it's okay. We're socially distanced. We're socially distancing, <laughs> so sure. it's okay for this, for this programme. Um, but, you know, it's very interesting, you know, talking with, like, some of my other peers around, you know, what they have done in terms of church, you know, in regards to lockdown. And it's just so interesting how I'm starting to understand that for many people, church equaled God. Yeah. So when church was on... God was on, yeah. right? Mm. And so in the lockdown, there has been a bit of a spiritual slump. And this is not with everybody, no. but there has been a little bit of a dip because the yeah. churches are closed. Um, and so because the churches have closed, even though they've got the online, that kind of social connection support system hasn't been as strong. And so it's just so interesting in, I guess, us thinking in the context of Elijah, you know, how, you know, we don't really know the full details of Elisha's story. Like, we don't get the full details, details. All we know is that, you know, one day he was on the mountain doing this amazing miracle, and the second day he was running. Mm. And I think I probably want to connect it a little bit to maybe about the faces of God and about establishing that relationship. And, you know, in, in 1 Kings 19, you know, he says, you know, God of my fathers... So, you know, when the call came to Elijah, Elijah didn't think twice because he knows that this God who has called him is the God of his fathers, right? And so there is now a need for this personal connection. And I think perhaps maybe Elijah's story really brings out the importance of really knowing God for yourself, mm -hmm. but not just the one face of God, but the different faces of God. Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Isaac, your, your parting thoughts? Um, my parting thoughts are just literally that I'm so grateful for the story of Elijah. I, I love what you've just said there, Millie, where, you know, regarding this situation, COVID, pandemic, lockdown, we're in a place where, for me, and, and I'm glad you said it's different for ver um, various people, mm. for me, I've appreciated getting to know God. Mm. I've appreciated hearing that still voice. I've appreciated like when Elijah was on the mount, you know, all of the ruckus that come before the still voice wasn't where God was. Mm. All of that, he, he remained still and he listened mm -hmm. to the voice and then he moved. And I think for me, the way I relate to that, especially with COVID and all the rest of it is I've now in this season become a lot more in tune with God from being still. Mm. And it's allowed me to just block out the fast-paced life mm. and listen. That's yeah. beautiful. Thank you guys for sharing. And I think um, for me, one of the biggest takeaways from this um, story was just the fact that sometimes when we're lonely or when we're not in our, in the, in our usual state of mind, we forget who God is mm. and we forget who we are. Yeah. Mm. I mean, Elijah, that name means Jehovah is God. Mm. And all his life, he's, that's been his name. That's who he is. That's right. His parents gave him that name as a reminder of who God, you know, God is in a, in a time where Israel was kind of forgetting who God was and they kept going after one Baal and one Asherah and one, mm. you know, different gods and stuff. Um, his parents put a stake in the ground and said, Jehovah is God. And he's been raised to know that just like some people who are watching the broadcast they might have been raised in church and thought that they you know they knew god and but some sometimes we go through our own crises mm. yeah. and in that moment um just like god is was elijah's god mm. i just want everybody to know that god is our individual god going back Absolutely. to the thing about the faces of god i want yeah. everybody to experience a face of god but most importantly i i think it's so important that everybody recognizes that in the quietness of the moment if you listen god is always chasing us he chased mm -hmm. us from genesis chapter three mm -hmm. when adam and eve messed up and genesis you know from from gen from genesis till now genesis chapter four sorry three three he's been chasing us from then like just mm -hmm. like he came after adam and eve in the garden right he came after us 
he then sent <laughs> he then sent Jesus to still come after us. Yep. And and if we don't get it, you know, he's still now speaking to us directly through the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Exactly. still coming Amen. after us. And right. my, I guess my prayer for everybody is that wherever we are in our Elijah journey, whether we are, you know, listening to God and doing what he sent us to do, whether we're on the mountain, you know, and everything's great, whether we're in the valley and we're just like, God, I'm lonely, take my life. Whether we are actually alone mm. or we just imagine we're alone or we feel we're put, we're put upon because um, we think we're the only ones that are doing what God wants us to do mm. when actually God has a whole heap of people doing what he wants them to do, whatever the situation yeah. that we find ourselves in. Yeah. I guess the thing for, for the folks at home really is wherever you are, Look for the different faces of God because in He will show you Amen. the face that you need Absolutely. in that moment. Love that. And so that's what I'd Amen. I'd like to leave with everybody tonight. So today, rather, shall we pray? Yes. As we close. Yes. Father God, you are awesome. You created this earth with your words, but yet you still take the time to chase after us and to love us. God, nobody is watching um, divine sessions by accident. Mm -hmm. Nobody is hearing this message or the beaut whether it's in the message of the study or through the beautiful music that we've been listening to, none of that was an accident. Mm -hmm. And so God, I'm asking you that even when we feel that we've accidentally stumbled on you, that you'll make yourself so real that we'll know that you've been pursuing us and that we will respond. Thank you that every situation that we find ourselves in, you have already taken care of. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you um, care about our physical and emotional needs. Yes. And we thank you that you have promised that you will never leave us or forsake us. We thank you that you keep drawing us with your everlasting love and your loving kindness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 And thank you to all the folks at home that have, you know, talked with us in the chat and, um, you know, contributed to the discussion and, and shared. And, you know, we really encourage you to um, take a look a little bit more deeper into in Elijah's life. There's something three or four chapters yep. mm -hmm. that we, we, we didn't really get to. But yeah. it's, not, it's not a lot of his life, is yeah. there? It's not a lot, but, but, but it's, it's deep. In, yeah, <laughs> it's impactful. So uh, we, we encourage you to do that. Yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for, for being part of our discussion today. Um, one of the things I love about this, this song is that actually no matter what kind of week I've had, it doesn't make a difference. I know that I can just rest in the assurance that God mm. is actually awesome. And it's an upbeat song, it's uplifting. And sometimes I think Christians might have a perception that we're kind of a little bit sad or negative. Yep. But in spite of COVID, in spite of this panoramic, we're just going to be happy. And I love it. I love Awesome God. Mm -hmm.
Oats. Oats.